fell off to the ground. Way out west there was this fella. Fella I want to tell you about. Fella by the name of Jeff Lebowski. At least that was a handle his loving parents gave him. And he never had much use for it himself. This Lebowski, he called himself the Dude. Now, Dude, that's a name no one would self-apply where I come from. But then there was a lot about the Dude that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And a lot about where he lived, likewise. But then again, maybe that's why I found the place so darn interesting. They call Los Angeles the City of Angels. I didn't find it to be that exactly. But I'll allow there are some nice folks there. Of course, I can't say I've seen London. And I've never been to France. And I ain't never seen no queen in her damn dundies, as the fella says. But I'll tell you what, after seeing Los Angeles, and this is here story I'm about to unfold, well, I guess I've seen something every bit as stupefying as you'd see in any of those other places. And in English, too. So I can die with a smile on my face without feeling like the good Lord gypped me. Now, this here story I'm about to unfold took place back in the early 90s, just about the time of our conflict with Saddam and the Iraqis. I only mention it because sometimes there's a man, I won't say a hero, because what's a hero? But sometimes there's a man, and I'm talking about the dude here. Sometimes there's a man, well... Uh, He's the man for his time and place. He fits right in there. And that's the dude in Los Angeles. And even if he's a lazy man, and the dude was most certainly that, quite possibly the laziest in Los Angeles County, which would place him high in the running for laziest worldwide. But sometimes there's a man, sometimes, there's a man. Ah, lost my train of thought here. But, ah, hell, I done introduced him enough. Losing one's train of thought is the best way to describe this week's film. However, it should not be looked at as a detriment. This week's film is 1998's The Big Lebowski. This genre warped film directed by Joel and Ethan Cohen, otherwise known as the Cohen Brothers, tells the tale of Jeffrey Lebowski, played by Jeff Bridges in his definitive role, or the Dude, as he is otherwise known as throughout the movie. The Dude is an unemployed man that lives the simplest life he can that revolves around bowling with his friends, Walter and Donnie, played brilliantly by John Goodman and Steve Buscemi. One night, the dude is assaulted by men looking for a different Jeffrey Lebowski, one that is quite wealthy and has a young trophy wife that owes money to some unscrupulous characters. Once the mistake is found out, one of the men urinate on the dude's rug that really ties the room together. This begins an odyssey of kidnapping, fraud, in many episodes of craziness that befall the dude. Needless to say, his life becomes not so simple anymore. Early on, we see the traits of the dude. This is evident in two scenes. First, his encounter with the men who assault him. And then when he goes to the wealthy Mr. Lebowski, seeking compensation for the rug that was urinated on we see that his nature never really changes despite the situation. He is almost always unflappable despite the happenings and insanity around him. Where's the money, Lebowski? You want that money, Lebowski? Bunny says you're good for it. Where's the money, Lebowski? 
Where's the money, Lebowski? Oh, um, it's down there somewhere. Let me take another look. <coughs> Your wife owes money to Jackie Treehorn. That means you owe money to Jackie Treehorn. <clears throat> Ever thus the dead beats, Lebowski. No, oh, no, don't do that. Not on the rug, man. See? See what happens, Lebowski? You see what happens? Nobody calls me Lebowski. You got the wrong guy. I'm the dude, man. Your name's Lebowski, Lebowski. Your wife is Bunny. My, my, my wife, Bunny? Do you see a wedding ring on my finger? Does this place look like I'm married? The toilet seat's up, man. What the f is this? Obviously, you're not a golfer. Woo? Yeah. Isn't this guy supposed to be a millionaire? Yeah, what do you think? He looks like a fin loser. Hey, at least I'm housebroken. Oh. And now, our second <laughs> clip. Okay, sir, you're a Lebowski, I'm a Lebowski. That's terrific. But I am very busy, as I imagine you are. What can I do for you, sir? Uh, well, sir, it's, uh, this rug I have. It really tied the room together. Uh... You told Brandt on the phone, he told me. Where do I fit in? Well, uh, they were, they were looking for you, these two guys. Uh, you know, I'll they... say it again. You told Brandt on the phone, he told me. I know what happened, yes, yes. Oh, so you know that they were trying to on your rug. Did I urinate on your rug? You mean, did you personally come and pee on my rug? Hello! Do you speak English, sir? Parla usted inglés? I'll ask you again. Did I urinate on your rug? No, like I said, woo, or peed on my rug. I just want to understand this, sir. Every time a rug is micturated upon in this fair city, I have to compensate the person. Come on, man. I'm not trying to scam anybody here. Uh, you know, I, I'm just, uh... You're just looking for a handout like every other... Are you employed, Mr. Lebowski? Wait, wait, let me let me explain something to you. Um, I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. Uh, Are you employed, sir? Employed? <laughs> you don't go out looking for a job dressed like that, do you? On a weekday? Is this a... What day is this? Well, I do work, sir. So if you don't mind... No, I do mind. Uh, the dude minds. This will not stand, you know? This aggression will not stand, man. I mean, your wife owes me. My wife! It's not the issue here! I hope that someday my wife will learn to live on her allowance, which is ample. But if she does not, that is her problem, not mine. Just as the rug is your problem. Just as every bum's lot in life is his own responsibility, regardless of who he chooses to blame. I didn't blame anyone for the loss of my legs. Some <laughs> took them from me in Korea, but I went out and achieved anyway. <laughs> I cannot solve your problem, sir. Only you can. Yes, that's your answer. That's your answer to everything. Tattoo it on your forehead. Your revolution is over, Mr. Lebowski. Condolences. The bomb's lost. My advice to you is to do what your parents did. Get a job, sir. The bums will always lose. Do you hear me, Lebowski? The bums will always Much like all Coen Brothers films, this one is vibrant with amazing characters and phenomenal writing. Now, the characters do not develop much throughout the film. They actually stay the same, but that is okay. This is due to how great the performances are. One of the more popular performances in this film is the aforementioned John Goodman as Walter Sobchak. This film hardly gets started as we see this maniacal Vietnam vet go from a soothing voice of reason at one point to an over-the-top lunatic the next. 
this scene is one of the more popular scenes, as I stated, and shows the chaos Walter can bring to any situation, including a bowling alley. Woo! <laughs> I'm slamming him tonight. You guys are dead in the water. All right, way to go, Donnie! If you want, it is no dream. 20 minutes late, man. Herzl. Huh? State of Israel, if you will it, dude, it is no dream. What the f*** you talking about, man? The carrier. What's in the huh? carrier? Huh? Oh, Cynthia's dog. I think it's a Pomeranian. Oh, I can't leave him home alone or eat the furniture. I'm watching it while Cynthia and Marty Ackerman are in a You brought a Pomeranian bowling? You brought it bowling? I didn't rent it shoes. I'm not buying it a beer. He's not taking a turn, dude. Man, if my ex-wife asked me to take care of her dog while she and her boyfriend went to Honolulu, I tell her to go for herself. Why can't you board it? First of all, dude, you don't have an ex. Secondly, the no dog papers. You can't board it. It gets upset. Hey, its man. hair falls out. Walter. Papers. Over the line! Huh? I'm sorry, Smokey. You were over the line. That's a foul. Bullshit. Market eight, dude. Oh, uh, excuse me. Market zero. Next frame. Market eight, dude. Smokey, this is not Nam. This is bowling. There are rules. Hey, Walter, come on. It's just, hey, man, it's Smokey. So his toe slipped over a little, you know? It's just a game, man. This is a league game. This determines who enters the next round robin. Am I wrong? Yeah, but I wasn't... Am I wrong? Yeah, but I wasn't over. Give me the marker, dude. I'm marking an eight. Smokey, my friend. You're entering a world of pain. Walter, man. You mark that frame an eight, you're entering a world of pain. I'm not. A world of pain. Look, dude, I, this is your partner. Has the whole world gone crazy? Am I the only one around here who gives a the rules? Market zero. They're calling the cops, man. Put the piece away. Market zero. Walter, put the piece away. Walter? You think I'm supposed to market zero? All right, zero. You happy, you crazy? I must Believe say, this was a hard film to review. There are so many awesome moments and one-liners that are even used today. To select only a few moments or clips was quite difficult. The cultural impact of the film can be felt to this day. It has been the most requested film to be reviewed on Classic Film Reviews. It has spawned a religion known as Lebowskiism, a festival called Lebowski Fest, and finally, one would be hard pressed to not hear one of the many popular lines stated in the film regularly in society in general. What makes this an exceptional film is that it blends so many quality film aspects. It is funny, has a compelling plot, rich characters, a vibrant soundtrack, and leaves a lasting impression. No matter what type of film you are in the mood to watch, The Big Lebowski would fulfill your cinematic need. And quite frankly, I, Eric Pilcher, abides. For Matt Connerton Unleashed, this has been a classic film review with Eric Pilcher.